Okay. Well, I'm going to call call the meeting to order. Um, <clears throat> thank you for being here and uh, ask Councillor Brown to introduce herself. Hello, I'm Carrie Brown from District 3. Okay, thank you. Um, meeting's called to order. I'll mention, as always, if anyone's online uh, joining remotely, please indicate your first and last name on your screen. Anyone who is uh, wishing to speak, uh, ask to be recognized and the chair will recognize you for two minutes. Um, and please, anyone who's speaking, state state your name and, and where you live before you start. Um, <clears throat> and that is about it. Uh, I want to, uh, we have first item on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is there uh, anything that anyone needs to change about the agenda? I haven't seen anything. I've got no minutes on them, just so you all know. I've got so much going on. I triaged you all to the bottom of my list. Okay. There. Sorry. So that'll be off the consent agenda. Agenda minus the minutes. Um, well, we're a little bit out of uh, turn for that because we haven't gotten to gen general business and appearances yet, but it's okay. This is just to approve the agenda. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> now we're on to general business and appearances. This is an opportunity for any member of the public to uh, address the council on any item that is not on the agenda for up to two minutes. Um, we will start with uh, with people in the room. Uh, Steve, are you? would you like to be recognized? Again, I question the two minute limit. Uh, I think it's not consistent with the law and the constitution. Uh, I'd ask y'all to consider one of you who voted in favor of the MOU uh, voting, making a motion for reconsideration. I think it's a prime example, and it does overlap with your executive session review of the city manager tonight. It's a prime example of the council not doing its due diligence, being led around by the nose ring by the city manager, when that MOU is so full of flaws, committing the city 10 years into the future for expenses that haven't been quantified or studied anywhere, that basically giving away a multi-million dollar radio system that the city is the awardee of from the state, if if indeed it ever happens. And it's just a reckless example of this council going along with whatever the city manager puts in front of you. And it's it's bad governance. And there's enough in there highlighted and memo and studied by others for y'all to really dig into it and make it an example of it. This is not the way to do the public's business is to basically commit un unknown amounts 10 years into the future and give away public assets. That MOU was a farce and it was part of the engineered secret meetings that Bill Frazier conducted with Aldsworth and Pete and, and Bar Barry officials. And that's not consistent with the guidelines for the grant that may right there might have disqualified Montpelier from receiving that grant. But my point is y'all just went along with it. And despite both Kim Cheney and I raising concerns and, and approved it. So it's, it's on you, but your, your only option to try to make it good is to move to reconsider it, put it on a future agenda and examine it in detail, ask tough questions about those dollar amounts and, and what other cities have bought into it and what other cities are subscribing to, what other cities are subscribing is distracting, uh, subscribing to that kind of blank check. That's no way to do the public's business. Um, the garbage has not been picked up this week. The, the mud from the, Water blowouts. Uh, we got. We still got the state and elm mud, the inches thick that people have to cross. That's been before the water blowouts, and then the TD Bank water blowout has left uh, Langdon Street 
and State Street all coated with mud, sidewalks. And it's it's as if nobody, it's as if no one who's in charge or responsible for governing this city is out there seeing this stuff and asking it to be cleaned up. The cones got put out for the uh, for the ice, but then the ice had been gone for days and the cones are still blocking half the sidewalk. It's like, who's running this show, if anybody? Thank you. <clears throat> so I don't see anyone else in the room who wishes to be recognized. Um, anyone uh, joining us remotely who wishes to address the council? I'll take a moment. Okay, I'm not seeing any hands raised, so we can... Oh, I'm sorry, Peter, I see your hand raised now. I, I, I just uh, wonder whether the city manager would like to uh, say anything about the incident at the uh, transit center on Monday. Oh, so yes, I was planning to after the public had spoken. Is my mic working? Okay, yes, I was planning to once the public was done speaking. Okay, thank you. Okay, I don't see anyone else, uh, any other members of the public with their hands up. Um, so we can move on. So if I may, before we go. I don't have a lot of information that hasn't already been shared, but um, I think we should note that there was a pretty horrible incident at the transit center on Monday night. Uh, individual uh, who was being asked to leave the facility uh, did not agree with that uh, and um, fought back and ultimately ended up stabbing the staff worker there 10 times. Uh, we, have, we have received word that the staff, that that staff worker has been moved from critical care or from the from one unit to the med surge unit, which means he's in stable care. Looks like it's going to take a while, but will survive fully. That's great news. Um, the immediate result of that was that Good Samaritan, who had been operating that evening hours, immediately suspended uh, their operations for some unknown period of time. Uh, as a result, uh, the city and the churches and Ken Russell from another way have been working to put together evening hours. Uh, I think on Tuesday night, Christ Church opened early before the shelter. Tonight, uh, Bethany Church is hosting and tomorrow night's UU Church. And uh, we're continuing trying to cobble that together till we see what long-term ramifications were. I did reach out to both Down Street and Green Mountain Transit just to touch base with them since their property was in nearby Green Mountain Transit. Uh, as we know, lost a full day of service there, had to close for the day on uh, Tuesday because of the cleanup, uh, you know, hazardous material, bio waste, et cetera. So they were unable to open their building. Um, they are interested in conversations about what service might look like if, the, if they are to reopen there. Uh, obviously, uh, they have a prime interest in transit and don't want to create a situation where people are not, are afraid uh, to go there for transit. They didn't say they would not do it or they wouldn't partner with it, but they um, they would just want to be part of the conversation. Uh, otherwise, that's really all we have to know right now. Obviously, it's created a, a big chill through, I think, the staff community of people working there. I think staff at Good Sam, staff at Another Way, staff in other places are feeling uh, very vulnerable um, and pointed out uh, Councilmember Morton eloquently talked about this at our last meeting, the danger and stress of these kind of jobs. Our hats go off to all the people who are out there um, doing what they have to do. Um, we do, like I said, we flee, we certainly have places for tonight and tomorrow night during the storm. And uh, hopefully by Friday, we'll have a place for Friday. So it's not the greatest situation. Uh, reminded that pre-pandemic, uh, the church is actually rotated. There was a set schedule. Um, for that evening time that rotated through the churches. And I think there may be some movement to see if they would do that. I don't think any of them would do it without staff. And it sounds like maybe another way and um, Good Sam are collaborating to provide staff at those locations as best they can. 
Um, so we're in a state of flux, obviously. Uh, this hits Good Sam pretty hard, as noted. The, that was their employee and the son of one of their co-directors. So I think it's a, it's a very difficult situation for them. So um, that's what we know right now. That's what we're, we, the city and the collective community are trying to do. And we just appreciate everyone that's reached out and everyone that's volunteering and everyone that's helping. So it's sad. Montpelier resident? I don't know if they're a Montpelier resident. Do we know? The attacker is not, but I'm asking about the victim. I yeah, I don't know if the victim is or not. His father is. Okay. Okay. So is there any plan to help him or support him or um, like? We haven't heard. So not that I know of. We haven't heard of any needs other than, you know, I think at this point he's receiving hospital care. I don't know what his medical insurance situation is. Um, and we've been in regular touch with his father, who is also the co-director of Good Samaritan. Uh, so we've been talking with him both about the condition of his son as well as ongoing programming. So uh, he has not asked for any help yet, but we can certainly find him. Thank you. Okay. Peter, is your hand just still up? Okay. No. I, you know, I, 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 I just would like to um, add a couple of things. Uh, anyone who's read the news knows that um, the person uh, uh, accused of st the stabbing is not a homeless person, has not been a guest at, a, at, at the um, at the shelter, it's very important that in talking about this with others, that that be absolutely clear. I think anything that the city can do to keep making that clear, um, it's understandable that people uh, would be upset, but this really had nothing to do with the that the fact that we had a warming shelter at at the transit center. This was someone who came in from the outside. Um, and uh, so I, I find it understandable but disturbing that Green Mountain Transit, if it's a fact that Green Mountain Transit is concerned or people are afraid to go in, the, the transit center is no more dangerous than it ever was than any transit center is. I mean, uh, buildings that are open to the public without, you know, security um, are, are going to be subject to these things. And the association with the homeless in, 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 is very unfortunate and unfair. Uh, and I just hope that you all understand that and that the city will do everything to make that clear anytime that this is being discussed. Thanks, Peter. I, I think that's an excellent point. And I think we all appreciate that. Over to that because I certainly do appreciate that, and, and that is correct. Um, there are a lot of facts that are unknown, and um, including, you know, why that individual was there, who they were there to see, what for what purpose, and um, what prompted the uh, asking to be removed. Um, so we don't know what relationship it has to that community, uh, and uh, I I agree that it does not imply that homelessness is in and of itself. Uh, creates violence, but it is, uh, there's just a lot of information we still don't know uh, that we hope to learn as this unfolds. Okay, with that, we will move to uh, the consent agenda. Should we pass the consent agenda with removal of the minutes? And is there a second? Second. Thank you, all those in favor, any, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. No, any opposition? All right, we've adopted the consent agenda. Next item on the agenda, item six, a public hearing on bond articles. And I will open the public hearing and then turn it over to the city manager. Seek help from the assistant city manager. We didn't rehearse this. Um, Basically, this public hearing is required by law. Uh, if you are having a bond, you know, the, the first public hearing is intended to be before the decision is made to place an item on the ballot so that the council may hear 
opinions from the public um, about whether something should or should not go forward. This public hearing is intended to answer questions the public may have about the proposals. Uh, this year's uh, bond articles are amendments of last year's bond articles, simply uh, amending some terms in one case, making the article a little more flexible, in another case, re changing the financing terms. Um, so there's no substantive issue to discuss, although we're certainly happy to answer any of the details about those issues. However, because they are bonds and because there are special statutes that govern bonds, we were advised, and I think we agree, that we should follow all the steps for approving a bond, even though this is an amendment and not a new bond, just in case. Uh, if we wouldn't want to have any quirks on the bond market when and if these bonds were let. So that is the issue. Um, Kelly, could you want to maybe explain the details of those? Are you prepared to? If not, I can. Actually, I think I've got them here too. So here we go. So as the, the cover sheet indicates, we've got sort of the, the language um, as proposed. It's reflective of what is in the uh, town meeting warning. Um, and so I'm just going to go right down through the list. And if you have questions, please let me know. Um, Article 14 um, is the bond related to general city infrastructure improvements. Um, the total bond amount is for 1.8 million. Um, it's for highway recreation park and building infrastructure improvements. Um, and so this um, item was amended to include some language that allowed flexibility and transparency um, around the details provided after the initial question, um, allowing for um, renewable heating systems and ener energy efficiency projects at Public Works Garage. So the energy efficiency projects were the sort of add there just so that we could you know, allow for a little bit more flexibility. And then there was a additional language provided um, around Complex Park, um, which is also cited here. Um, and so moving on to items 15 and 16, they both have similar um, term adjustments. The original terms um, were for 20 years. These have been adjusted to 30 years to reflect the terms that we received from the um, from USDA um, for the loan entity. So those are the, the changes, their amendments and adjustments to those articles. Thanks, Kelly. You're welcome. Um, does anyone in the, in the building have any questions? Well, Steve Whitaker, uh, I think it should be presented as a red line because you've eroded trust uh, of the public to say it's about transparency. I understand there was a grant received for the, what I call the shit cake dryer, uh, el eliminating the need for one of those big bonds that was $18 million or something like that. Um, That's incorrect. Okay. There was a long-term loan received from US. There was a grant, but not for the full amount, anywhere near the full amount. And the, the, low, the low interest loan, which is a grant because you're paying less than uh, the commercial interest rates was for 30 years. So we needed to amend from 20 to 30 years to take advantage of that federal funding. But the way this is, with not seeing, not being able to see a red line, I can't see what you're really up to here. But the, it appears that even if people spoke up loud and clearly that we shouldn't be spending three or more million on a Confluence Park, this appears to give you latitude to shift money from another project into Confluence Park without any more public debate on it. It similarly gives the council latitude to shift money away from Confluence Park to another project. Well, um, why don't we explicitly, you know. So these are the same list of projects that were approved last year. The major wording difference actually has to do with the heating and renewable energy system at the DPW, specifically set a pellet boiler. And we've looked at uh, options and 
that may not be the best solution. So the, the wording was changed so it wouldn't be as specific. Everything else is not that different. But why wouldn't a red line version be here to inform the public who has learned not to trust you? Post the red line version if it's helpful to the website tomorrow. Um, that would be helpful. I, I believe I'm not the only one who's scrutinizing this stuff. So uh, it just raises red flags. Uh, thank you for answering the question that we're we're going to issue the bond to pay down to pay down the loan that we got, or we well, need the loan on top of the bond. Loan, and, basically, you were using borrowing authority, so you can uh, it could be a loan or a, a bond is a simple is like a loan. So uh, no, the, we would do a loan in lieu of bond. We're not going to double dip, but we're going to receive the federal loan and pay it back over thirty years using the city's debt authority. And, and the so language, the you know, I'll just, be, and the language does not authorize us to borrow to double that money. I think it would be helpful to, well, I guess that you're voting on an amended town warning. So the other point I would make is that this warning uh, states that the city meeting warning as passed is the supporting document, but in the packet, there's only an incomplete version, half of it upside down. Um, you know, but it only it jumps from article eight to article 14, which is also clipped as is the whole strategic plan document unreadable in the packet. So um, I think we're paying for better than this quality of work. Well, I'll just mention to you that if if you want another copy of the city warning, we'll be happy to provide that for you. Is it is it complete in the packet or is it just a, okay? So the printed. For, for yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, it is complete. Um, okay. Yeah. What's well, missing? Some pages and it's upside down. One of them. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for noting that. Thank you. Any uh, any other member of the public uh, wish to be heard on or have any questions raised? Peter Kelman. Um, I, I am, I'm afraid that people, members of the public are not going to understand these three bond, uh, uh, bond issues. They're, they're not going to understand. I, I, I did read in the bridge today, Bill's explanation, but I don't know how many people are going to read that or even understand what it means that these are only amendments of words for uh, bonds that we voted on last year. Um, and I, I raised this previously and you guys did adapt most of what I suggested for the wording on um, a 14, but at that time, uh, uh, Councillor Bates said, oh, well, you know, we've always had an explanation of these things that you can see when you come in to vote, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but not everybody comes in to vote. And I don't know whether there are any plans to actually have an explanation. I think there needs to be more explanation. And I think if there isn't, I predict that this uh, uh, this will fail. This on, on 14, people will vote against it because they think they're voting against spending a lot of money on Confluence Park. Um, so I, I, so I, 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 it's it's unfortunate. And, and the and city manager explained to me that he had originally suggested that, the, uh, that there be separate bonds last year, but that this council decided to put them all together. I think he was right. I think that this has created a problem which you're, you're trying to fix by wording it better. But I don't think it's worded enough better to uh, to for the public to really understand it, and uh, I just hope that in the future, if you not to put a whole bunch of things into one bond uh, um, uh, article, uh, but separate them so that people can express their views of Confluence Park, for example. Um, so I, I had one other thing I want to say, but I, I guess that's I guess that's about it because I can't remember what it was. Um, but I, 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 I just, I, I, I at least do what Donna suggested about putting uh, an explanation 
um, in the polling place, uh, John, if that's possible. Um, and, but also, I think maybe an additional uh, ex explanation in, in Front Porch Forum or wherever it is that you think you can reach the most people. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Um, Carol W. Carol W. Is there someone? There I am. <laughs> Here I am. Uh, my last name is Welch. I live on Valerie Avenue. I have two questions about the three um, issues that we've been talking about. Uh, I, I'd like to have a better understanding of, of why it was 20 years and now it's 30 years. I think that, um, well, anyway, that's my question. I don't, I, what happened that, I mean, the, the payment's going to be less each year, but it's going to go on for longer, for lack and of it. If you have more questions, why don't we get all three of them out and then. Oh, uh, sorry. And the, my other question goes back to the um, the um, the change in the wording about the uh, if anyone on this call knows anything further about what what's different about what uh, you want to do at the um, DPW garage with respect to pellet boilers, et cetera. Uh huh. That, those are my two questions. Okay, great. I can I can answer both those questions for you. Um, typically, the, we bond or bor borrow, and I think you know Mr. Whitaker just raised a good distinction. I think is a good chance for us to learn there. The vote is actually authorizing the city to borrow money um, and over long term borrowing. So that can be done through any number of things. Typically, we issue what are, you know municipal bonds through the municipal bond bank and without getting too technical basically they take all the bonds that local governments approve around the state put them all together and bid them out at once usually to get a, a much more favorable rate on a 50 or 60 million dollar 100 million dollars worth of financing versus us putting out our 1.2 million or 4 million or whatever um, and so those the bond bank issues bonds with 20 year terms so typically when we are anticipating to use that for financing, we put on the ballot a 20 year term because that's what we're expecting to use. And that's exactly what we were expecting to use last year. We had also applied for funding through USDA for this project and did receive um, three or $4 million in grant funds. And then the remainder in very low interest loans, much lower than we would even get through the bond bank, but over, a 30 year period. That was the terms of those loans. Now there's no penalty for prepayment, so we could still pay it back at the lower rate over 20 years. But in order for us to secure the financing, we had to show that we had the authority to take a loan with 30 year documents. So we are therefore seeking the amendment to this so that we can match the, the terms of the financing we've received for that project. So I'll stop there. Was, did that help Carol? Yes, thank you. That was that. That's very clear. Um, and then, with regard to DPW, um, we had done a study. We had a, a net zero plan done for the city by an outside consultant, and they made several recommendations for ways that we could um, improve our renewable energy portfolio. And one of them was to place a put to replace the boiler at DPW with a pellet burner, pellet stove. And we moved forward with that recommendation. It was the highest priority project in that plan. And so we, we moved forward with that with the estimated funding. And that's what was approved last year as part of the wording for all of these projects. Over the course of the year, we've, just, we've, you know, we've now hired a sustainability coordinator. We've looked at some options and there may be other options. It could still may end up being a pellet boiler, but it may not. For example, uh, some of the, the methane that's being created at the wastewater plant that we just talked about, this new project, may well be able to be used to heat the public works garage. Um, so that would be a sustainable alternate sort of heat that was not pellets, but it would still require the investment of funds. There are some others, heat pumps potentially. So we're looking at an array and wanted to be sure that we did not, uh, the, the bond language was so specific, pellet burner, um, and we we asked our bond council that could be interpreted to mean any sort of alternate energy and he said eh, probably not you should probably clarify that so this amendment was created to allow for a better range and pick the most effective technology that would be 
the most renewable and save us the most money. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, I can. I just have a clarifying because um, I have looked at that net zero plan. And um, is there once we come up with all these different alternatives, is there a cost benefit analysis that's going to be done like there was for the items in the um, in the net zero plan? Yes. So it, we're still looking at something that's right. um, cost effective. Because I, I was just a little troubled by the like the open ended idea of of what it is that we're um, voting for. No, and, and, <laughs> and you're on the right track there, Carol. Um, the uh, you know the pellet stove they did cost benefit. So obviously, if you know, we know what that is, if we can do better than that, then then we will. For example, if we can, you know, if we have a pellet stove, then we still have to purchase pellets. If we can somehow figure out the technology to use our own methane, then we don't have to, you know, not we're, we're manufacturing the source. Um, so we don't have to buy pellets on an annual basis. So I think there's a lot, you know, all of that needs to be figured out, which is why we wanted to maintain um, full, full options. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, is there anyone else in the public uh, who wishes to uh, raise a question or to be heard? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing um, and bring it back to the council. Council, do you have any questions or comments on this uh, proposal? Okay, so we need a motion to approve it. Nope. No, no action is required. We simply have to hold the public hearing in advance of the vote. Okay, so we've completed that. Um, now we... Uh, we discussed this before the meeting, so we're going to uh, skip over the city manager's review, go to uh, all the other uh, items on the agenda, and then at the end, we will. We, I would anticipate going into executive session for the city manager's, manager's review and likely not uh, returning uh, to public session at, at the conclusion of that uh, item. So... Item eight, no other business that I'm aware of. Um, item nine, council reports. Let's start with you. Um, we had uh, some lively park commission meetings this month. They are finalizing their management plan and their ecological assessments of the park. It is posted online and I've Googled it all sorts of way on the website and it comes up. Parks commission and right up there is updated management plan. You can go to their minutes. It's attached along with their agendas, the last what, four or five meetings, uh, but the latest will be with the latest meeting, which is coming up on the 23rd. So that's really important. They're also got a link on their uh, part of our website to go to the survey about what part of the park relationship to the country club road property. So people can do that. It may have already closed. It was closing the 21st, 22nd, yeah, yeah, like I can't remember the exact date, but so people should do that right away. Go onto the website and go to that survey. And likewise, uh, on the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, I'm on that transportation group, and we've been talking a lot about how the state needs to look at complete streets formula and guidelines when they do roads. And on that discussion, I found there was a lot of other communities like Montpelier who has at least talked about reducing their local speed within the town limits beyond what the state will allow. So I just want you all to know that discussion is happening. And likewise, it's part of the Montpelier Transportation Infrastructure Committee discussion that's coming up. And within that committee, we're also talking about more flashing crosswalks where you push the button and the lights flash. And so uh, that has, there've been some issues of design when the flashing light is like, a bar and not part of the sign. It's harder to see. And there's been some regional assessment of uh, those kind of flashing beacons. So we're going to look at that before we buy any more, but we are considering some of the requests that have come up, including one that was made here at City Council. Okay. Um, Councillor Brown, since you're, you're virtually in your seat here in Montpelier. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Um, I also wanted to talk about some committee work. Um, I'm on the housing committee and at our most recent meeting, we discussed the um, 
the application from the Vermont College of Fine Arts to change some of their uses from conditional to permitted. And I understand that they have withdrawn their application to the Development Review Board about that. But I just wanted to say that, just wanted to kind of report that the, the at the housing committee meeting, the I believe that the members who attended that meeting were unanimous in wanting to um, recommend that the housing uses that were proposed to be changed from conditional to permitted be changed in recognition that we need more housing, we need to remove barriers to developing housing, and we need to um, do what we can to facilitate development of additional housing resources in the city. And so while that may not be a particular point at this moment with the Development Review Board and with this particular application, uh, it is something that the Housing Committee continues to look at and will be continuing to support. And then I also wanted to mention the Public Restroom Committee, which I think I'm a member of now. I'm, I'm acting as though I am at any rate. And they had a meeting today and unfortunately I was only able to attend for about five minutes because I have some out of town obligations that, I, that were, made it impossible for me to continue to attend. So uh, I don't know if there's anyone else here who was able to attend the full, the full meeting, but at our, the previous meeting, we did make a strong, uh, we made a motion to urge the city to in, reinstall porta potties in public places that are accessible in the city. And, um, uh, we are, are hoping that we can see some immediate action to get some kind of bathroom facilities available, even if it's just porta potties, which is far from ideal, but something that can serve unhoused people in the city um, right away while we work on longer term, kind of more comprehensive plans for what we may be able to provide. And that's it. Thanks. Thanks. Councillor Cohn. Uh, so I had my second listening uh, session uh, with District Two people um, uh, last on last Saturday, uh, and it was a very um, good um, experience for me because I learned a lot from them. I'm planning to do more uh, after the election if I were elected as a city councilor. So one thing I just want to raise um, today, um, they talk about um, how they can um, follow up the um, improvements on projects. Uh, they say there are like information on the um, city website about what happened, right, all the votes and everything, but uh, what is happening, right, any updates. So, uh, they mentioned, um, you know, we talk about different ways and uh, in the end, they mentioned front porch forum might be good because everybody checks, right? This project update, right? This month or something. I don't know if you want to consider, but I thought it's a good uh, feedback uh, for all of us to uh, follow up with everything the city uh, has been doing. And the second thing is, which uh, I already shared this request with them, city manager. Uh, so um, I received email about um, can any changes uh, to the dog policy in Hubbard Bar uh, be put back out to the water? So is there any plan to do that? And where we are at um, uh, in this um, event or activity? <laughs> Yeah, thank you. I can actually respond to both of those. Um, first of all, uh, any, you know, we appreciate any thoughts about how to keep people better informed. We do now have a DPW newsletter. It's actually attached to um, the, the, the weekly report that you get, and people can subscribe to that, and it does provide sort of weekly updates on what's going on, and I think they post that. I think we do post that. I don't know. We, for a while, we were posting our weekly memo to the Front Porch Forum. I don't know if we're still doing that, um, but but all that is included with that. So people can get that, but if, you know, maybe we can think about some other ways to keep people informed as well, but we are, we are very actively doing that through that DPW newsletter. Uh, with regard to Hubbard Park, you know, I think that's a council policy decision. There has been no discussion that I'm aware of at the council about putting any kind of issue about dogs on a ballot. Obviously the March, it's too late for the March ballot. So we'd be talking about next March, I guess would be the next regularly scheduled meeting, unless we were to call a special meeting for that purpose. Um, just to follow the process, and I'm I'm not a super familiar, but the, the the charter gives the parks commission the authority to sort of manage the parks and basically create rules. 
the city council are the only ones that can pass ordinances. So if, to the extent that the Parks Commission is creating rule and policy about the use of dogs, bikes, or anything else in the park, that really falls within them. They're a separately elected board, but they're part of city government. If so, I, I would urge people to engage with the Parks Commission. And if the Parks Commission were to come to the city council to say, hey, we, we've got this rule and we'd like it made an ordinance, then obviously that would be before us. And, and at some point, this council and or Parks Commission could decide whether something uh, goes before the voters. I, I think um, Council Member Bate might be able to speak to this better than I, but the last time this was before the voters, it was advisory only, it was not a binding vote, and it was part of um, a special election. It wasn't during a red, regular election. So, I mean, it was, we got public feedback. The vote was about 50-50, slightly in favor of keeping dogs off leash. And, um, but it was also during a June or June election for some other purpose. So was not held during a, a highly attended town meeting. Thank you. Do you have anything to add, Donna? The Parks Commission has been holding all sorts of hearings on dogs the last couple of months as well as you know, surveys, they really sought out the opinion. And one of the reasons that they've been looking at it was one, the city did do an ordinance or has an ordinance, dogs on roads should be leashed. And the park's K-line code of conduct did not include that. So that's one of the things within their management plan that they're changing is that roads in the park, you have to leash your dog to be on the road because there has been a lot of incidents with cars and dogs, but also to make it in compliance with the ordinance. They're also considering at the parking areas where they find a lot of more conflict happening among dogs and dogs and people is when you're getting in and out of cars. And so they're considering making that change that in the parking lots, all dogs must be leashed. And they're looking at having some on-leash um, designated trails so that if you have a, a personal preference or you have children and you want to avoid loose dogs, then you could go on these trails. So that's part of their discussion right now. Thank you. Maybe I can just forward uh, the email to you too. So yeah, it will be better, you know, to inform uh, our neighbors, right? <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Donna. Councillor Hurl. Thank you. Um, Two quick things before acknowledging Jennifer's last meeting. Um, so one, I've gotten a couple of pieces of feedback um, from some folks who have weighed in on the country club property survey. And it, it's kind of brought to light that a lot, the way some people are like thinking about the questions of the housing options, the recreation options, like I think the presentation's excellent and have gotten really good feedback about how clear and like so, I think the consultants um, and city staff are doing a great job with that. I think the piece that it sounds like might be helpful that we could think about like a broader presentation, like I was reflecting back on the work we did a few years ago on the recreation center and the analysis of different sites and different options and costs. Cause, cause what I'm hearing is some people are, for instance, answering, like I, I don't know how to answer it because I want rec facilities, but do I have an option of somewhere else? Cause I would rather it not be there. And so like, what am I really deciding between? And so they, and there's not really a space in the way the survey is structured to get that across. So they might actually want that service, but they're saying no, because they would prefer it to stay at the rec center in town. And so I just think like a, at some point, you know, some kind of public conversation about, um, you know, what are the real options and why, I mean, I, based on like the analysis we did, we, I, I'm guessing we would probably be like, it makes more sense to cite it there because we can do so much more, um, but like remind people of all the analysis that went into the rec center and just a lot of questions of like, why aren't we doing housing here or here or here, all places that the city doesn't own the property. So just kind of reality checking some of the, like what, what we really have the option to do as a city, what we don't, conversations that are happening with different property owners. Um, just I'm getting a lot of feedback about just some of that other context. And I, I feel like just some better information about that could be, could help inform the conversation around the country club road property. Um, so that was one thought. Um, from just wanted to note uh, from the energy advisory committee meeting last night, having the sustainability director 
is such a an asset for the city. The complexity of trying to figure out how to actually manage these projects, how to take advantage of federal and state funds that are all these moving pieces right now, figuring out the best location for things. I mean, it's like the amount that he's learning and like the ability to just move these projects forward and like figure out how to actually um, live up to this commitment. And I think it's, you know, projects that are going to save energy, be more efficient, do all these great things, you know, and meet our, our climate commitments. Um, so just, just a plug for Chris and, and the great work and how complex and it's like, how oh, did we do this without somebody who could spend so much time doing it? <laughs> um, and last thing, just wanted to take a minute to thank Jennifer for her service on city council. Um, it being her last meeting, I know I have just learned so much from her. I think the perspective that she's brought she has brought her full humanity. She has been brave and vulnerable and shared her stories with us, shared her professional expertise, shared so much um, her deep values and love of people and community. Um, and I just think it's been such an asset for our community to have her serve. Um, I think it's been such an important and valuable voice. Um, so deep gratitude for serving. It's been a real, just feel so lucky to have gotten to serve with you and gotten to know you. Um, I think also just the fact that it hasn't been sustainable for very long speaks to the work we still have to do as a community to you know, having an indigenous woman have to take on extra burdens serving. Um, it made it harder and it just shows the work that we still have to do as a council, as a city government and as a community to really be accessible for everyone to serve and you know, make that something that everyone can do and thrive at. Um, and thank you. And I'll leave it there. <laughs> this would be a good time. Those kind words, do you mind? Go ahead. Wait. <laughs> Should we wait until she's done talking so she doesn't so she can get through it? Say <laughs> what? You have to open it up so everybody sees it. These are not flowers. This is the other side of life's work that you has helped us do. And every time you use it, I want you to remember how much you have not only pushed away negative debris, but you've made the path for more positive growth. Okay. Sorry, this is really bad for the sound of people. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. This is so perfect and so Vermont. <laughs> I need one. You have no idea. My husband's probably going to be very excited. He won't have to clean my car. If you're up. Um, I'm not going to say much because I. I'm a very emotional person, obviously. Um, it's one thing everybody's learned about me in Montpelier. Um, I want, ugh, I really just want to say um, chi miigwech to all of you for um, being such beautiful neighbors. Like I, you're not colleagues, you're my neighbors. We're all neighbors. And um, coming from a very big, harsh, scary city to a very small, small city that feels like a town um, was really intimidating. And you've all just kind of embraced me and supported me and educated me and become friends with me. And um, and Carrie, you're, I, my, my eyes are all blurry. I can see you right there though. Um, just the camaraderie has been beautiful and wonderful and um, it's been a huge honor. I keep saying this, but it really has been a huge honor serving uh, my community this way. Culturally, that is like the foundation of, of my people is giving back and serving, 
even when you're tired, you continue to serve. And um, even though I'm not going to be on city council, I will continue to serve and support you and um, our beautiful little town that I really love that my children are growing up in. And um, despite all the hard parts, they're they're going to be okay, and we're all going to be okay, and Montpelier is going to be okay. I have a lot of faith in all of you, and I have a lot of faith in the community, and to the people that haven't been here, um, thank you for your trust, and um, I'm just really grateful and thankful for everything that you do, and I will still be here, and Chief, I will, I'll always be there for you too, sir. <laughs> even though I work for Barry. <laughs> That's all. Okay, I have just two things to say. One is that uh, this Friday at City Hall, probably in this room, there's going to be uh, a blood drive. I uh, checked online. There's uh, There were 12 more slots to give blood. I'm you drinking, you drinking out of my Red Cross uh, award for giving blood i'll be here and encourage everyone else on the council to sign up to be here and give blood too but uh, but really the most important thing i want to say is to <laughs> thank you jennifer for everything you've done you know we every time there's been there's a change of uh, the, the makeup of the council people bring whatever is unique to themselves to uh, to the council and to the service of the city and it's been a tremendous help to the city to have you on the council and bring your unique viewpoint and and your commitment to the council and even though it hasn't been a long time it has been very very valuable and i personally will miss you The clerk's report. Jeez, Jennifer, it seems like you just got here. <laughs> <laughs> that's, be, that's because I'm old. Um, well, we don't interact much, but it's been a real pleasure. So good luck uh, in whatever's next. And, um, oh, there you go. All right. Love the sound of that. Um, so I would just note that. Um, Early voting is not quite as as horrifically low as it was, but I would still describe it as modest. But we're getting a pretty steady flow of people coming into the office to vote. Um, it is time for me to start reminding people that post COVID, we are going back to Saturday voting hours, the Saturday before the election. Um, I'll have the clerk's office open from uh, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, for voting only. So keep your parking tickets to yourselves at that point. Um, and the only other thing I would mention is that there is going to be uh, this weekend, uh, the League of Women Voters has been working to um, uh, get the word out about non-citizen voting. And, uh, and they've been working with, with my office and there's an event they're promoting uh, this weekend. Um, and I should put something up on the clerk's page about it. Maybe I'll do that. Um, anyways, about non-citizen voting. Um, and it's going to be Saturday at, oh, you'd think I would have had this at my fingertips. Um, oh, at the library. All right, you got it. Oh, good. Pius, I think I'm pronouncing it right, right? Pius, H. Uh, a Y E S room. Oh, the Hayes room. Hayes yeah, room. yeah. yeah. Um, Ten thirty. Yeah. I may not have been able to remember the time, but I do have an alarm set on my phone, so I won't. Look, I will be there. Months. If you don't tell, I will call you. So you have <laughs> to be good. there. That's good. So um, I have a couple of things. Uh, let's see if I can read my own handwriting here. Uh, the annual report should we should have got a PDF either today. We'll have it tomorrow. So be posted to the website and we will uh, get that out so people can read the annual report online. We will be getting print copies in probably not to be the beginning of next week, but that will be out for people to see. Um, what did that say? 
<laughs> wow. Well, can't be that ex important. Man, I'm sure it was. Oh, well, maybe it'll come to me. I have the world's worst handwriting. I admit that. So um, certainly uh, offer best wishes to all the candidates and all the folks running for any office uh, next week. This will be our, you know, our last meeting until then. So we uh, certainly wish that. As far as Jennifer is concerned, don't forget to take your name tag. Yeah, there you go. And uh, I won't pile on too much, um, but I'll simply say that uh, I've, I've appreciated you being on the council. And I feel that I'm a better person for having worked with you this time. I feel that I appreciate what you've given to me. So thank you for that. Um, and if I can ever read this, I will get back and announce it at some point. Okay. Um, and last up, we've completed everything. Next on the agenda is the city manager's review, something the council does. Uh... Oh, yes. Finally read it. Um, and we've already mentioned it a little bit. The, the survey for the Country Club Road has been extended um, until I think March 3rd, whatever that Friday is. Um, next week from this Friday. So it was going to close down February 21st, but it's been extended to March 3rd. So people have not weighed in on Country Club Road, that project, those ideas, notwithstanding. And I think great point to bring that in perhaps, you know, with a new group. Um, and I guess I will observe that the next time we're in this room, there's going to be, you know, at least two or three new people. So it's going to be, uh, it'll be different. So we will we're planning a good orientation for all of you and uh, looking forward to working with the next group, but we've certainly appreciated working with this group as well. And I think, believe I speak on behalf of the staff for that. Okay, now I'm done. Okay. All right, now we're to uh, city managers review. This is uh, something we do uh, every year. The, uh, it's an opportunity for the council to uh, review the uh, performance of the city manager and how well he has uh, he discharged his duties and advanced the uh, policies of uh, of the city council. Um, the chair would entertain a motion to go into executive session. Is there a second? Okay, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we're going into executive session now. Um, I will close out uh, this uh, this link on Zoom and only, and then we'll, we'll stay in this room and Councillor Brown can, uh, and, and the rest of us can log into the executive session link we have. Um, should we take a break between then? So we're, uh, give uh, the sound people a chance to get done. And so, as I said, I anticipate we will uh, not be coming into re returning to public session and we will uh, adjourn from the uh, executive session. Mm -hmm.